Welcome friends of the greasy shop rag. Today we're going to take a look at an Echo CS310 chainsaw. Customer wants a full tune up on it. So the Echo CS310 is a 30.5 cc chainsaw. Uh, I would consider it a consumer grade saw. Echo uses the word professional grade a lot on their webpage. Uh, I guess I've never sold one of these saws to a professional. And actually the biggest sellers, I should say the biggest buyers, are people that can't, don't have a lot of energy to pull the recoil rope, but they want a saw that'll get some work done and they don't want to go electric. I mean, as far as ability, this is a good saw. Durability, it's a great saw. Professional grade? Maybe. I don't know. I don't have any customers that use them daily to say whether or not they're professional grade. So what have we done here so far? We pulled the spark plug out, we looked in the cylinder, we wanted to make sure that it was clean and shiny in there and that this tune-up was a worthwhile effort. I mean, if it's scored, obviously you don't move forward with the repair. Then we pulled the fuel filter out of the tank. We took a look at what kind of fuel this guy was burning, how old it was, and pressure tested the fuel line, checked the integrity of the hose, and if the carb is sealed tight. And then we put a new fuel filter on it. In goes our new spark plug, and uh, we'll torque that down to like half an ugga dugga or whatever it is. Click. Ooh, double click. Uh, the fuel or the air filter, that's probably going to stay on here. I didn't have another one in stock to replace this one. So there's a bale that holds that filter in place. And this filter is, I would say, one of the wonkiest filters there is to deal with. As far as how it, uh, Yikes. How it gets mounted in there. And you can see someone mounted it wrong at some point because it sucked in a bunch of dirt. That, don't, that does not look good. The filter itself is intact there's no pinholes in it so probably what happened is that tab on the bottom of the filter wasn't latched in properly to the slot on the bottom of the filter base filter base holder and it sucked some dirt through there at one point so right now we're cleaning that dirt off of that filter base Just blow it dry. Dry weight of the Echo CS310 is 8.8 .8 pounds. Uh, it's available with a 14 inch bar. It is a durable little saw that starts easily. I do recommend this saw uh, to anyone looking, any, uh, I want to say homeowner. I'd really like to see how the pros like this saw, but. You know, the anti-vibe springs don't seem that durable that they're going to hold up to someone really cranking on it, which is what you're going to get in the professional world. Uh, you have the plastic handle, which might be okay, but most pro-grade saws have a metal handle. The chain brake is uh, a dual post brake. And that's fairly durable. I haven't seen any of those breaking. So let's take a look underneath the uh, starter mechanism. The reason we pull the starter mechanism off of there is because all the cooling air for the chainsaw comes in through those slots on the starter housing. And we want to clean that up. The other reason we pull the starter off is because we want to look at the ignition module 
and check the air gap on it. Now when you bring me a chainsaw, part of a tune-up is uh, cleaning it. Uh, I don't necessarily polish them, but I do clean them into uh, a state of, what do you want to call it, regular maintenance. Um, so it's ready to go for the next run. We're going to use our Husqvarna official air gap tool, which is uh, 0.3 millimeter, I believe. And this checks out fine. So back together, it's going to go. So, don't forget to put this cup washer on this first screw for the chain brake. I've seen these things come through, and not just echoes, but a lot of times that chain brake lever is incorporated into one of the starter bolts, and it has a special set of hardware. And a lot of times that special hardware is not there. The chain brake lever just kind of can flop around and Gee, that's not something you want, you know, on a safety device, right? So, just because the engine is going to run and is tuned up doesn't mean that the tune-up is complete. We're checking the cylinder base bolts, making sure they're tight. We're looking at anti-vibe springs. We're looking for loose hardware on mount or on, on handles and anywhere on the saw actually and just a general inspection looking for broken pieces anything uh, wonky right so we're gonna throw the hood back on I like these uh, hold down clips on the CS310 completely toolless they work pretty good Now we're going to pull the clutch cover and take a look and see what's going on in the clutch department. We find a lot of oily sawdust residue, which is completely normal. And the condition of the spur drive is, I would call that, lightly worn. So we got everything blown off and cleaned up in the clutch area. And we're going to put a new chain on the saw for the customer. Uh, by their request. And we're also going to flip the bar so it wears evenly. Okay, we're tensioning the chain. Lift the tip of the bar when you're checking your chain tension. Uh, once you're happy with it, snug the bar nuts down. Next, we're going to take a look at the spark arrestor screen. I mean, this is some exhausting work here. Yeah. Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. Spark arrestor screen prevents rogue sparks from starting a forest on fire. Probably a good idea to keep it in there. Just keep it serviced. Make sure it's not carboned up. Make sure there's no blockage. This one looked good. If it was plugged up, we would take a torch, heat it up and burn the carbon out, and then reinstall it. This plate that holds this deflector plate, uh, it's being a little stubborn here. And I'm being a little bit stubborn too, using the tool to start the threads on the bolt, but you know, if you do it by hand, you get a better feel for the first thread and you don't take a chance on stripping it. So, really, I mean, that's all I got for you on the CS310 tune-up. Thanks for watching. Later.